find a chance for you to go there too to find your truth find a new you before you do brothers may I want to say something every time I enter an exam I fail and I don't know what to do well I think uh, you, you should consider your goals. If you do not have goals set for what everyone to do in life, you will never succeed. Mm. You know, to set the goals before you start doing something is very much important. And as you know that education is the most expensive thing in life mm. because it's the only asset you have and nobody can take from you. So when you're seeking education, you have to make sure that you put the goals. Mm. What are the objectives? You understand. So. Before exam, make sure that you read that number one. You set the strategy when to read, when to go out, when to, you know, to meet with friends. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the strategies, then you go to the exam, you know, you say maybe I'm going to read in two weeks before the exam or I can memorize. That cannot help you mm -hmm. because education, you are not seeking the education for the exam. And that's why you fail. Mm. So you mean that's that I have to organize everything? Yeah, you have to organize and then you, have, you, you set the goals. You understand. You have your objectives. If you do so, then you can succeed. Jazakallah khair. Oh yeah. Did you ever hear of the uh, phrase, set your smart goals? Have some smart goals set. That's what we want to talk about today. But before we talk about that, we also want to talk about the things we benefited and gained from this program. Since this is the last episode, we have uh, shared a lot of information and we do want to know what you gained out of this and what you're going to take with you and how you're going to benefit yourself and how you're going to benefit others. And not only that, but what's your goal? What's next? So if uh, Brother Omar could share with us, yeah. what exactly did you gain from this program? One of the most important things is that how to deal uh, with pressure when we are under pressure mm -hmm. and uh, also to race into good deeds. Okay. So you gained how to deal with pressure. Mm -hmm. And we had a full episode, how to overcome uh, stress and uh, deal with pressure. What, are, what is one of the points that you took with you? Yeah, no, not to overwhelm oneself by too many tasks, maybe. And of course, the top thing here is that we seek tawakkul. We, we trust Allah, of course, before even... To rely on the yes. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. And you said to raise to do good deeds? Yes. And that was the first episode, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And what did we gain from that? We, we gained from that that uh, it's not enough for us to say that uh, we believe in God and that that's it. But we, we mm -hmm. have to do the good deeds because we are tied. in the amanu amalu salihat. It's always like mm -hmm. this in the Quran. Good. So those who believe and also do good. It's, so it's about, you know, your belief is right here today. Tomorrow when you wake up, is it going to be here or is it going to be here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the more good actions you do, the higher your faith goes. Mm -hmm. The less good actions you do, the lower your faith goes. Yeah. This is how Iman is, right? It's a proof. Up and down, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So when you raise to do good deeds, you keep that faith going. Remember when the Prophet Muhammad yeah. uh, used to make that dua, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub tabbit qalbi ala deenak. He used to say, O oh Allah, turner of hearts, turn my heart firm upon your religion. His wife asked him, Is this dua only for you or is it for everybody? He said, our hearts are between two fingers of Allah's fingers. He turns them around as He wishes. So today, you may wake up as a Muslim. Tomorrow, you may wake up as a Kafir. When you race to do good deeds, you're less likely to wake up as a Kafir tomorrow. Why? Because you have that enthusiasm and motivation to focus on this deen and to race to do good deeds. Good. Brother Wa'il? Okay. I will use your word uh, that sadly the program uh, is, is coming to end. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to attend uh, 30 episodes. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, some topics I recall like love for the sake of Allah, the most merciful responsibility in Islam. Uh, the most uh, topic which touched me uh, was... What is the point that touched you in regards to love for the sake of Allah? What did you gain from that? Uh, love for, for the sake of Allah, uh, that uh, have the love uh, of Allah uh, always in my, in my life uh, during hardships and during uh, ease times. 
Uh, I benefited a lot from the episode of the death of the Prophet mm -hmm. uh, I, I was touched and moved uh, by the whole uh, episode, especially this one. Mm -hmm. uh, something else too, I benefited uh, from the program that uh, like going, interacting, th this class idea, interacting and uh, uh, sharing our own uh, personal uh, experiences. And memorizing a hadith as well. Memorizing probably. a hadith <laughs> and you giving me these tasks and also like going and searching and digging for the authenticity of the hadith. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very great benefit which we as a team uh, benefited uh, as well. Alhamdulillah. So I guess uh, my, I would say my battery is charged to move forward after the program. So you feel motivated right yes. now. Yes. Good. So after we go uh, through the rest of the brothers, we're going to talk about goals. So prepare yourself for that. What's sure. your goal? What's next? Okay. Uh, Brother Idris, what have you gained from this talk? Uh, for me, I, I wasn't here for all of the shows, but I was here for four or five shows. But for me, I, I gained a lot of insight in the sense of knowing that, uh, knowing that a lot of things that, well, not a lot, the few things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you know, haram for us, the benefits of knowing what they lead to and why understanding what these evils are how they're connected. Mm -hmm. So it made me, uh, my, uh, my horizons broaden in the sense of understanding the, 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 the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. And we touched on some uh, very important points. Although this uh, program is 30 minutes long in each episode, but alhamdulillah, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us success to cover some important points. Yes. And uh, what about leadership? Uh, for me, I think um, I learned that mostly Leadership is, is broad and it's comprehensive. Mm -hmm. People like tend to think of leadership as you know, uh, giving orders and, uh, and and follow up in this sense, but it's broader than that. Yeah, it's, it has a lot of uh, self characteristics that you need to be worried about in yourself. Mm -hmm. It isn't just about you observing other people and. Yeah. Delegating and dealing with other people. It's, it's also a self analysis, also. And it's responsibility. Yes. Right. It's a big responsibility mm -hmm. for you to be a leader, an appointed leader. And uh, we know that uh, Umar ibn Khattab said, the best of your leaders are those who you love and they love you. Mm. They make dua for you and you make dua for them. And the worst of your leaders are those who you hate and they hate you. You make dua against them and they make dua against you. May Allah suffer us. Mm. Uh, Brother Muhammad, what could you share with us in regards to what you learned in these episodes of this program? Uh, well, first of all, um, I have to thank uh, that brother who pushed me uh, on this program because I benefit a lot. What's his name? Uh, his name is uh, Mahmoud Afifi. Okay. Yeah. May Allah reward him. May Allah reward him. And actually, um, I didn't. Uh, I uh, I wrapped this uh, program up with the main three things. The uh, the first one that. I got motivated, really. Since uh, the, la the first uh, episode, you asked us, uh, whosoever prayed Fajr in congregation, just uh, raise your hand. And you said, don't feel shame. So uh, I, I think most of us didn't raise his hand. So uh, you when I asked, who have you prayed Fajr in the masjid? In the masjid, yeah. Mm. All, nobody raised their hand. <laughs> I said almost. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't see who was behind me. And um, I, I feel shame. Really. We, then you said, you, now you feel shame. Yeah. So um, uh, I began to, uh, alhamdulillah, to pray in uh, masjid. And... Uh, um, Alhamdulillah, uh, yani it is a uh, great, great feeling, you know, right? Alhamdulillah. So, uh, so you wake up in the morning, you pray Fajr in the masjid every morning? Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. May Allah Alhamdulillah. keep you firm. I mean, it's I not mean. easy, it's a struggle. Yeah, really. And it's success from Allah if you're able to do it. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I also, I, uh, it's, it was very hard to, uh, uh, first night, I, um, I find it easy because it was the first uh, night after uh, the program. And second night, I, uh, I wake up. I woke up um, at the time, but I have an excuse to go um, uh, for, for the masjid uh, without having a bath. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, a test, you know, there is no time and you should do 
and um, it, w it was time, uh, okay, sleep and, and pray after this. But Alhamdulillah, I make it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I made it. So um, uh, th that was uh, the, f the, the first thing. Alhamdulillah, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, uh, I um, intended, inshallah, not let uh, Fajr in, in Masjid, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, that's good. May Allah keep you firm Amen. and uh, increase you in taqwa and iman so we could all, so you could pray Fajr in the Masjid and inspire us all to pray Fajr uh, in the Masjid inshallah. every morning. Inshallah. Um, there is also something that I would like to mention, is, and that mm. is that uh, at the beginning of every single episode, there was an act scene, right? And uh, I would like the viewers to know that uh, these scenes were an act, and uh, we did this with the intention of benefiting the viewers so that they could relate to this. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit you from that, and uh, we ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings. Uh, Brother Yasir, would you like to share something? Yeah, sure. First of all, it's, it's been an honor, you know, to have to to been here to 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 be here in all your lectures. Alhamdulillah, you know, it was very beneficial, and I hope it was beneficial for all the viewers. Now, uh, there was an episode about truthfulness and lies. Alhamdulillah, you know, that was very beneficial because a lot of us lie sometimes. So you know, now you're never gonna lie again, huh? Inshallah. No, it's <laughs> not like I'm, I, I used to lie, but you know, I, I mean. Of course, no one, no one is perfect, you know. We all do, we all have our flaws, but Alhamdulillah, you know, it's, it's been very, very beneficial, Alhamdulillah, you know, and uh, truthfulness leads to, for, for people to have, to, to get that impression about you, uh, that you're honest, and, and, you know, even if someone told, even if you lied, it's because you've always been truthful, people mm -hmm. won't believe that you lied, you know, and if you, and vice versa. If you were always a liar, no one would believe you if you say if you're saying the truth. So uh, you know, one should stick to, to 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 one side, you know, and never change it. Okay. Of course. On, uh, so I see that you're motivated from this angle, and uh, it, it, it seems that you're speaking from your heart, and you're really going to yeah. apply this in your life. You're going to try your best to to be very truthful, inshallah, inshallah. And sincere. It's good. Is also, there another point? Yeah, also uh, leadership, you know, uh, how to be uh, a good leadership, you know, setting examples, um, setting, uh, being a role model for, uh, for others, you know, to follow your lead. Um, you know, you have to, to, to make an example, just like the Prophet ﷺ made an example for the whole ummah to walk on his footsteps. Khulafa al-Rashidin, all of them, just like uh, Abu Bakr, and Umar, Uthman, and Ali, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with, with all of them, they all said, a great example to be to, for, for leadership for all of us. Also, there was an episode about anger management and how to control our anger, and uh, you know that was very beneficial too. Alhamdulillah, because you know anger from shaitan, and to be peaceful is from iman. You know, it's one of the characteristics of a, of a Muslim, of a real mu'min. There's a difference between Muslims and mu'mins. You see. Uh, not every Muslim, every not not every Muslim is a mu'min, but every mu'min is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Also, you know uh, how to be how to uh, also about you know um, like not I won't say equality between men and women, but how to pay respect for women. You know, mm -hmm. not to de not to, to, to them. degrade them, them mm -hmm. themselves. You know, in front of other men or other women. You know, have yeah. respect for themselves. You know, be proud that they're Muslims. Be proud that they're in, in you know in Muslim uh, uh, countries. And for, for Muslim, for other Muslims who are in you know Western countries, I'd say you know just just stick, just hold on to your to your deen. You know I know mm -hmm. it's hard. You know, it's you know, Prophet Sallallahu said, "Tuba lil ghuraba." Heaven is meant for them, inshallah. So you know that's it. Alhamdulillah. All yeah. right. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. May Allah bless you. And um, I am quite inspired by all of you brothers as well. You know I've been doing the speaking, and you also interacted with me, and uh, you taught me a lot of new things as well. Uh, I did learn that, you know, my knowledge is very, very little compared to what is out there. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that from us and from you. Brother Ismail, could you share with us what you learned? Well, actually, um, I'm, I'm moved about uh, mercy to mankind. Because uh, the world today, you know, we are in, uh, on the stage of mm -hmm. many problems. We have problems almost everywhere. So with this, I, I didn't actually participate in this episode, but when I, I was following the episode, so I learned much about how much to be 
kind to people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not only our immediate families that we should care of. The world is shared by humans. Mm -hmm. We have to have mercy to people, yeah. whether the poor, whether those the destitute who do not have places to live. Mm -hmm. We have many people today around us. They need our assistance. They need our help. So we should always give them our assistance. Mm -hmm. We should not leave them because they are poor. We keep company with people who are rich yeah. or people who actually have some means like us. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I learned from this, um, this episode that we human beings should always care for ourselves. Handy we should enough. always try to treat each other uh, in the best way. And All also right. I learned about... If we could save the other point for after the break, inshallah. Yeah. We'll have to take a break. We'll be back after the break, inshallah, and continue on where we left off. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Here we are in Islamic Motivation. This is the very last episode, and we are talking about how to set goals. We didn't talk about how to set goals yet, but we are saying our goodbyes and what we benefited from this program. And the brothers, mashallah, have uh, shared with us valuable information as to what they have benefited. We have Brother Ismail with us, who is going to continue on with his second point. Um, the second point is about um, being modest to Almighty Allah. Because I don't, you know, Allah created us to worship Him. He said, we were not created. Our God you know, didn't create human beings except to worship him alone. So we, you know, human beings, we should always understand that we are here as a passage. We are here as strangers. Tomorrow we are not here. Our great-grandfathers, our fathers, our mothers They're not are no here. longer here today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people to be proud of themselves, you know, um, they have to understand that this world does not belong to them. It doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. Today I'm here talking to people how to be just, mm -hmm. how to manage time, how to be you know, good in their societies. Tomorrow I will, I will not be in this world. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be talking about me. Oh, we remember Ismail who was with us in, a, in an episode. This is life. So people should not be proud of themselves. They should not take themselves better than other people. Mm -hmm. you know, we, all, we are all human beings. So let them understand that this is a passage. No matter who you are, how wealthy you are, tomorrow you are not going to exist in this world. And remember, that, uh, the destination that you are going to, you don't know there, you don't have any house there, you don't have any friend there, only your good deeds that will follow you there. Mm. So your so, good deeds are the only thing that you're going to take with you. Yes. We did have a topic on that, remember, when we said uh, how to do it big. Okay, so let's uh, delve into the topic of uh, setting goals. What kind of goals are we going to set? Now, before we talk about what kind of goals we're going to set, let me share with you a strategy called the SMART plan. Now, to set goals, we must be very, very specific. What is it that you want? Write it down, you know, within one month's time, I want to do such and such. You know, for example, I want to pray in Al Haram Al Makki. I want to pray in Mecca. Why? Because a prayer there is equivalent to 100,000 prayers at home. So then you need to work for that. What are you going to do? Buy the tickets, make a reservation, do everything that needs to be done to reach that goal. You're very specific. I want to pray in Mecca. Yeah? So being specific about your goal, that's just an example. Being specific about your goal is what you need for you to achieve that goal. Secondly, it should be measurable. Now for me to say, I want to pray in Mecca in one month, but I don't have uh, enough money to buy the ticket, then that is unwise you know it's an unwise goal unless if i'm going to work on something to bring in the money within that one month then here you're measuring things you put things in perfect order do you have a comment brother idris no okay
attainable, as in achievable. It must be something that is achievable. Some people say, um, I want to have uh, a big house, you know, a house worth uh, one million pounds, Egyptian pounds, within six months. But he only has 250,000 pounds. And there is no way he could measure and get that 750,000 pounds. So then here, he is not having a goal that is achievable or attainable. He's just dreaming instead of having goals. Speaking of dreaming, we need to be very realistic, you know? Um, who could share with me an example of an unrealistic goal? An unrealistic goal. Yes. No, well, for most people, of course, for the special people, it's, I was going to say something like memorizing the Quran in one month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like memorizing the Quran in one month. Is that realistic? Is it possible? For most people, no. It's a dream, mm -hmm. right? It's an illusion. For most people. For 99% people. Yes. And uh, if you find that 1%, please show them to me. Mm -hmm. So we can learn how to memorize the Quran in one month. So it must be very realistic. Achievable relates to realistic. Measurable relates to achievable. Specific relates to all three of them. Timed. If your boss comes to you at work and says, I want you to complete this task for me and stops doesn't say anything after that, then sit back and relax. You have no task. Why? Because he said, I want you to complete this task for me. But he didn't say when. So you could complete it next year or in two years or three years or even before you retire. Why? Because he never put a time in for that task. So if you want to complete a goal or you want to achieve a goal, one of the very important things to do is to have it timed. When do you want to achieve it? You want to achieve it within one month or six months? If you want to achieve it with one month, within one month, is it measurable? Is it achievable? Are there any possibilities? Is it realistic or is it a wish or a desire? You know, I wish to do that. I wish to travel to uh, Mecca and perform Hajj. We hear this a lot. Many people reach the age of 40, 50, they never performed Hajj. They had a lot of thousands of dollars in their pockets, in their bank accounts, and they never invested in the right way. They spent it on dunya, and they forgot about the akhirah. So they lost the opportunity, and they're still dreaming, you know, I'm going to perform hajj on that day. But they never performed it. Why? Because they don't have the real goal. They're not being, they're probably being specific, but not measurable. And their goal isn't achievable because they're not working on it. And it's unrealistic, as a matter of fact. It's also untimed. So this is the fact about setting smart goals. Smart goals. Now, I want to hear from you. What is the goal that you're going to work on, and how realistic is it? Muhammad? Uh, Alhamdulillah, thanks to God. Um, after... Uh, 30 episodes of this uh, program. Uh, in, uh, I found out that, um, that I have to uh, do two main things. The, the first one is I found that uh, my brother, mashallah, uh, they are better in English than me. And um, so I set a goal, which is Inshallah, I'm going to improve my English to reach the uh, much of fluency. Good. So you're very specific here. You yeah. set a goal. I want to learn English to be very fluent. Now, is this measurable? Yeah. Is it achievable? Yes. yes. You have your health. You, have, you probably have some wealth. And if you do have a lot of wealth, you could share it with us. <laughs> is it realistic? It is. It is. Is it timed? That's the question. Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah by, uh, Insha'Allah by the end of the 
coming year, inshallah. Yani one, in one year, in one year, inshallah. Okay, so we I could find you on Facebook, right? And so it's in one year, if you don't improve, then we could grab you by your ear and say, wait, I, you didn't stick to your goals. I, I, will, <laughs> I will not break my promise, inshallah. It's a promise. Inshallah. Inshallah. The, the second thing uh, is that I used to recite uh, verses from the Quran during this whole uh, program. Uh, so um, I, uh, I, I, had to, I have to say that, uh, alhamdulillah, I, I did most of the verses very well, alhamdulillah. But I have to confess that there is some little mistakes in Ahkam Tajweed, uh, which I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive uh, my shortcomings uh, to, to, uh, toward the, this May issue. May Allah grant you success. Um, Remember, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. Yes, Amen. you can have whatever you want from this dunya without losing an inch of the akhirah. Inshallah. And I, also it is a smart goal that Inshallah, twice. These two main things, I, uh, I, I, make, uh, the, I made the same time, I made it time by the end of the second, uh, the, the coming year, Inshallah, in one year. Inshallah, I'll call you and tell you that, Alhamdulillah, I achieved. I'll take my ijazah in, uh, in Tajweed al-Quran, Inshallah. And uh, you will find my English. So you better take my number. Inshallah. Right now, zero zero. <laughs> <laughs> After the program. Inshallah. inshallah. You can send me a WhatsApp. Uh, okay, inshallah. <laughs> Good. So, um, brothers, do you have uh, any goals? I know I have a goal. I have a goal. I want to seek more knowledge in regards to hadith, fiqh, tajweed, aqidah. I want to gain more knowledge and memorize more of the Quran and the hadith so that I could continue to share these messages with other people. Inshallah. Yes? Okay, I, 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 two things. The first one, I share the same goal like you. Uh, at the High Institute of Islamic uh, uh, Studies, uh, you know, I'm enrolled there. I hope I can carry on with my studies. This is one thing. And the other thing is to my dear uh, viewers, uh, I'm looking to the cameraman uh, uh, on Hoda TV. Uh, please uh, watch Islamic uh, Motivation. It's a 15 hours inspiring, life-changing program. And they could find it on YouTube. Yes, as well. So they type in on YouTube, they search uh, Islamic Motivation Huda TV. Right. And they'll find all of these episodes, inshallah. Inshallah. All right, Brother Idris. Uh, for me, I, um, I believe it's a motivation for me to, to get back to what I was doing. To, I, I allowed uh, a lot of things in life, work, busy, a few other problems, to stop what I was doing, was, which is uh, studying in Arabic grammar, Nahwa Sarf and and a lot of other things. And memorizing Quran slowed down a, a lot because I allowed other things to get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. For me, my goal is to... That's, that's a good point. You said, I allowed other things to get in the way. Yes. You didn't say other things came in the way, but I allowed other things. Yes. There's so no reason they them. shouldn't have to. They, mm -hmm. It was me who allowed it to be that way. These things didn't necessarily make me stop. I just used the, them as an excuse. Yeah. And the reality, I shouldn't have. So my goal is to, to reverse this mm -hmm. and go back to that and set time frames on certain things that I want to do, certain amount of, that I want to have memorized. Good. So we have one minute left. If uh, Brother uh, Omar could uh, let me know. Uh, within 10 seconds, what that goal is. Okay, uh, the dream is uh, that I want to host a program in one of the channels uh, that can benefit lots of people. Maybe on Huda TV. Uh, maybe, inshallah. <laughs> so, Allah. so I have a new success. message, inshallah. I mean, okay. Good. So you have a message you want to convey to the people. Inshallah. 10 seconds. My dream is to improve the lives of the people. Is that your dream or your goal? That's, that's my goal. Okay. <laughs> I said this, you know. So I want to improve the life of the people, not only in, in my country, but I believe that there is a lot of injustices in the world today. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are suffering. They need the help of other people to, you know, to redeem them from their problems. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm taking now international negotiation in Cairo University as mm -hmm. my master's. Because I want to help solve the problems in the world, Inshallah. in Inshallah. our societies. May Allah bless you. Inshallah. Yasir, another 10 seconds. Oh, stick to the deen. You know, life is short. You never know when you can die. I mean, you know, live every day 
just like uh, there's a famous man who used to say, "Live every day like it's your last." You know, you never know when you're gonna die. So, so your take goal advantage. Is to stick to this deen. Yeah, as soon as as much as I can, you know. Inshallah, may Allah, you know, grant us all Good. thabat. You know. Good. I want you to think of ways uh, you could stick to this deen and be more specific. Inshallah. For the viewers, we have to conclude. This is the end of this program. Thirty episodes have completed. Islamic motivation and we shared with you some motivation we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that anything good you saw is from the Almighty Allah and anything bad you saw is from ourselves and from the shaitan we ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings and our mistakes we hope you are truly motivated we hope you're gonna take this message and go out and apply it to yourselves and at the same time don't forget that you should be detached from the dunya and attached to the Akhirah because this dunya is like Tom and Jerry if you attach yourself to this dunya it runs to you it runs to you it runs away from you but if you detach yourself from this dunya it runs to you so if you attach yourself to this dunya you are Tom and the dunya is Jerry but if you detach yourself from the dunya you are Jerry and the dunya is Tom it chases you Jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu fikum this is your brother Rayyan Arab Wassalamu alaikum. Each day you'll find a chance for you to go there too, to find your truth, find a new you before you. Nothing to do